Hello everybody. Today I'm wanting to make a lingerie style bag. Now this is a beautiful vintage lingerie bag that I was sent by Jude who I think is Crafty AZ Shack. Uh, I don't think she does videos anymore though. Hello Jude, if you're watching. And she sent me this a number of years ago now. And I want to copy it, the, the style of it, because I'm making a book for Helen at the moment and it's a wedding book. And I just want to make a nice bag to put the book in when I send it to her. And I thought this would be a lovely way of doing that. And I have... I have the white satin from Helen's dress and I also have the lace from Helen's dress as well. And so I can use the satin and the lace to make this little bag. And it is all the same inside as it is outside. It's just the satin with some wadding in the middle and satin on the outside. Uh, and it has like a, just a, a bias edge, like with the same fabric around this part here and across here. And these ties are made from the same satin fabric as well, um, which is, you know, that's a fairly simple type of thing to do and I do want it about this size because by the time you get something inside of it see how it sits up like that it actually becomes smaller and it has to be big enough for the book so that are my intentions for today and I thought I would take you along with me while I do that and I'm also going to be using some Crafty Me Shop laces and trims on this. Now, I did ask Helen if it was all right if I was to use other things on her book. And she said, yes, that was fine, uh, besides her own wedding dress. So I'm going to be using some beautiful things from Crafty Me Shop. So I shall be back shortly after I have cut out the wadding and cut out the fabrics to make this little lingerie bag. All right then, so I have cut out the wadding to size. Uh, I only had a certain amount left so I've pieced it together and just making sure it's all fairly even it is. So I've pieced it together just using a large like basting stitch there. So that should be fine. And I've also cut out two pieces of the satin like that and that. And now I need to be I need to sew it. Just have to, uh, I think I have to sew it like that. So I've got two right sides together. Morning, sweetheart. Two right sides together. And then the wadding. So when I, and I, I need to leave a gap when I sew it together and when I flip it through, then the satin will be on the outside. But before I do that, I need to also have my lace in there on the right side now. My son's just got out of bed, so I'll just go see to him and then. All right, so we'll open that up. We shall put we shall put the fabric on. 
and then we should put the other fabric. So we have the shiny side of the satin, we have the right side of the lace, and then the shiny side of the pattern. So we sandwich all those together. be easier to do that like that and then sandwich that to the body. The desk isn't quite long enough for this kind of work. Well it is long enough I've just got stuff on it. <laughs> okay. Like that. And like that, and then I need to go around and pin it into position. Now I do want to leave an opening on one end where I can turn it through itself once it's sewn. I've cut the actual fabric just a little bit bigger than the wadding, just to make sure, you know, it was on there that I had enough. I should say. And it, although it's easier to see from this side, I need to be sewing on this side because um, it's just easier to sew onto the fabric rather than onto the wadding because that can sometimes get caught under the foot. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this all into place. And then I'm going to like sew all around it, starting here, sewing all around, just in a, a straight stitch on the sewing machine, and stopping there, back stitching a little bit when I start and when I stop, just to make that opening strong so I don't pull the threads out as I'm pulling the inside out and once I've stitched around it I'll come back and show you. Alright that's stitched together and all I'm doing now is just cutting those edges off. See how I've cut it a, a little bit away from the stitching there but because it's quite thick that will help it to fold inside like that and not to be too bulky on the corners. So I'm just going to do that to all of the corners. Like that. And then we can turn it through. And I'm just putting my hand inside. Uh, hang on, I just want to make sure I've got the fabric the way because I want the fabric to be and hang on, no I don't alright, so that's the right side of my lace, sorry so I want to go in between that one there and poking the f corner in like that you can just gently, never Never be rough because the opening can split more, even though we've double stitched it. Um, so just gently turn it in on itself like that. And hopefully we will have a nice vintage style, almost, almost, um, lingerie bag. Oops, let's just get those corners done. Uh, sometimes it's handy to use your bone folder in the corners just so that it stays nice and 
um, pointy, just gently though, of course. So that's one corner there, coming across. And there's the other corner there, like that. And the other two, just double checking on that one and, and that one there. Okay. I'm not a huge fan of using satins because sometimes they do they do pull. Now I have to work out which side I want my opening stitching. Now because I'm going to decorate there, that might be the best option, but it has to be a bit more like that. That's quite oh that's about right. Where's the original? Let's have a look. Yes, here's the original here. Of course, you can make them in any size. Um, I just use this as a guide because what I'm making with the book kind of fits in this. So, uh, so there's plenty of room there. I might straighten that up. That looks a little bit wonky to me. Um, so I might re see how that looks a bit although it could be just because it's not stitched yet but I'll check that in a moment um, I did have a look at how this one is constructed and it's it's got the binding but it's only starting about an inch so if I was to make this here I would start the binding here and do it and they have like an overlocker on theirs but because my overlocker doesn't work <laughs> I've done mine to flip inside out so that my inside is kept quite tidy and rather uh, see I could put if I wanted I could put the binding all the way around but that's not really what I want to do so I probably will end up slip stitching that shut like that um, because I really don't want to have a machine stitched line uh, and because there's was I wouldn't get a machine stitch line but I'd get a lot of bulk inside like that and I don't want all that bulk inside I don't think plus I would lose even more width from the bag and I really don't want to be losing any more width from the bag so I may I may just do the sides by hand um, but first I think I need to straighten that up because see how that side looks a lot lower than that side so I'm going to kind of stitch under here sometimes satins and things move around a little bit so I'll go fix that up and I've also cut the fabric and pressed it for the ties now that's just a strip of satin and all so what I'll do with this is put right sides together so across like that and all the way up to the other end and then turn it through on itself and press it and I'll do that twice so that I have two ties and I can put them to the right length once I attach them to the bag I'm trying to think where did they attach this oh okay so one is attached here in the center and I can t attach the other one when I put the binding on I also made some bias bias binding for myself it's just a strip of the satin cut on the bias actually it was on one of the seams which was cut on the bias and I thought that would help me and hopefully I can use that around the edge like that just to finish it off nicely just from about there going across like that and about an inch or so on the other side there as well 
Um, but first I will straighten the top and then close it and then then I will give it a press I think so it you know it calms down and then I will stitch the sides yes that's what I'll do and then I'll be back okay so that's all stitched together and closed in on one end and I've given it a light press these are the two ties and I've pressed those also and here is the bias um, that I have made and I just need to get this folded uh, I'll use the other one as a guide as to how deep I want it okay approximately there okay so what I want to do is just put a pin on this side these sharp pins would be best there and about there just to mark where I want to be having my bias start and stop and I'm putting it on this side simply because if if the sewing machine like snags or pulls or anything the satin it won't be that noticeable on this side then I can carefully do it by hand on the other side although the original bag has it um, they've got the stitching sewing the the sewing seen on both sides I really don't want that so I'll do that by hand um, so it's just a matter of, we might start at the other end, oops, it's just, I bought some new scissors, I bought, I said I was going to buy some new tools for myself this year, because I've been using, um, you know, not very good tools for a while now, and it does make a difference, so I bought these, the Tonic Studio Tim Holtz, um, scissors very sharp but very comfortable to use and I got those I got those in three sizes like that um, and they're lovely I haven't used those very much yet but I have used these probably the most um, what else did I get oh I got a little thread <laughs> I got a little thread cutter as well. Well, it's a thread cutter all, or you can use it on your paper crafting to grunge up the edges. And I also got, I got a new ruler. And this one has a metal edge and that's pretty much why I got it so that I could use my um, knife as well without ruining the ruler. And it, it also has the centre marking point on this one as well. So they are the new little tools that I got. Okay, so where were we? We were using this bias. So basically I'm just going to, and I have pressed this, but because it's satin, you know, it doesn't press flat, flat. I'm just going to taper it a little bit there like that to start with. I think I need new pins <laughs> and then I'm just going to pin it on that line all the way up now when I get to the corner I have to kind of stop there and then pivot all that fabric like that and then continue on that way like that so I have to allow enough fabric to do that and then come on sharp ones where are you oh here we go okay so I need to have that like 
that so that there's enough for it to go around the corner comfortably. And I'm going to take that all the way around to this other pin here. And then with what's left on the end, I'll do it across the top of this one as well. And then I'll be back. Oh, and what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm pinning it on and I'm going to put a straight stitch on the sewing machine where that crease is all the way around. Alright, so that has been all stitched down the side. I decided not to, well I did put the bias tape around it but I didn't like it at all so I took it off and hopefully that's not too noticeable where there's a, just a fine line and hopefully that will be alright. Um, so that's how that is and what I'm going to do is take some of my Crafty Me Shop lace trim and it's a beautiful wide trim like that it's um it, it kind of has a long piece three smaller pieces and then a long piece again but I'm going to put that there on the inside and what I've done is I've just taken off the three little bits like those last three off that center part so that I can attach my um, my ribbon there so that when this comes down yeah, when that comes down it meets it there like that um, but rather than have gaps here I've cut some pieces like this a couple of three of the smaller one, uh, two of the small ones two of the larger ones and what I'm going to do is just stitch those in like that like that and then get another one and kind of put those like that and like that and that leaves this gap here it kind of all just flows in better that will come out a little bit like that once it's stitched down so that's what I'm going to do there and then what I'm going to do is on the what am I doing? Oh, okay. On the front here, that will be like that. I'm getting some of the trim from Helen's dress. This is the lace that was on the bottom of her wedding dress. And I've just, it has little, little flowers here, but I've taken those off and I'm going to stitch that along there maybe a bit higher like that and then I'm going to use this beautiful trim from Crafty Me Shop because it has the iridescent beads and the sequins on Helen's dress also have iridescent sequins so I'm trying to tie it in as best I can there and I'm going to use this gorgeous trim I will make it fit of course along the edge of this and of course I will put the other I will put the other tie in the center there so there will be a bow like a bow here like like something like that <laughs> um, and then I've gathered up some of the satin from her dress so I can make a, a flower here perhaps I don't want to cover too much of this gorgeous trim and it is just a storage bag it's um, you know it's not meant to be as elaborate as the actual book itself so put something like that in the center there and then I have I have this other lovely lace from Crafty Me Shop also and I'm going to gather that up into a, a flower I think it's absolutely gorgeous I've just cut a piece off so I'm hoping that will look lovely and tie it in with this lovely trim from her dress which may come up a little bit higher than that um, and then in the center um, what are we putting in the center? I do have these, but I also have uh, see, I have these little buttons were around the waistline 
of the dress, uh, probably to hold the train on at some stage. Um, you know, I could make a little centerpiece out of that for the centre of the flower. I'm still thinking about that. Um, but that's, that's my thoughts, and I thought that will make a nice storage bag for the book that I'm making for Helen for her from her wedding dress. Um, and I think that will be nice. I don't know whether, because I don't want to cover too much of this lovely trim up here as well, because it is rather fabulous, isn't it? So anyway, that's that's what I'm thinking of. If I make any changes, I will talk to you about it once I've stitched all this on because, of course, I have to put some little stitches in here to get them on. So I'll be back once that's all done. Okay, so that's all finished. I have added the flower to the front here. I have also added the lovely pearl buttons and some little crystals. I have stitched in some tiny little pearls and these are some from Crafty Me Shop. Tiny little white pearls which I thought just you know added a, a nice little whimsical touch in the center of the flower. Um, there's the lovely trim from Helen's wedding dress, the beautiful trim from Crafty Me Shop, the lace from Crafty Me Shop, and all the satin from Helen's wedding dress there. I have the tie put on. I have added some more of this trim to the underside of the flap along with a lovely little lace that Lynn Harris sent me some time ago to finish it off. I have done as I said with the trim the lace down here but I've also added some of the beautiful wedding trim that I got from Crafty Me Shop also which is this one here. Uh, I'm not sure whether I've already mentioned that I decided not to go ahead with the bias trim around it. I just thought it did not, it didn't really look very good and it's not really needed. Now I may add more to this lingerie bag once the book itself is finished as um, until it's finished you know you don't really get the whole picture so I may add something down here as well but I need to see how the book itself progresses I'm quite happy with the way this turned out and I'll put a link in the description box below to Crafty Me Shop which is a Facebook store run by Esme she has a sale usually once a week maybe there's an extra one but there'll always be a notice on the top of the page um, telling you when the next sale is and that's how it's done it's done by live sales and you will always find something different every week like these laces here aren't you know normal there is no normal stock I should say it's um, it's different every single week and I'm really having a trouble there we go with this bow <laughs> oh dear stop laughing at me <laughs> um, yes as I was saying you don't get the same things every week which is really nice you know it's always a bit of a surprise I think I need to tuck that piece there in a bit more or oh that's better um, you never know what's going to be on sale in Esme's store. There's a close-up of all that. Um, I may make some leaves or something like that to put in there out of the satin as well I'm thinking or or, or tool but um, what I will do is when I actually finish the book and before I send it to Helen I'll, I'll make a video and show you the completed book and this little bag as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this um, how to video and I hope you try making one for yourself also and I did slip stitch down the side there um, which I'm quite pleased with that rather than you know having it tuck inside and having a, a, a lot of bulk that works quite well and is quite strong as well so there we go take care everybody and I'll see you soon bye bye